Hey guys, this is Mel, and I'm here to talk about The 100, episode 308, titled Terms and Conditions, which premiered Thursday, March 10th, 2016 on The CW, and guys, so much happened in this episode, I cannot believe it, but let's get right started with the 10-minute clock, and let's begin. So, something new we learned in this episode, so basically this episode focused focus solely on the arc, so the way I see it is that last episode was based on Polis, so whatever happened in... This episode with Arcadia is meant to happen along the same time frame as Polis. So kind of like you can think of Polis happening the same time as the Arcadia. So 307 happens um, the same as 308. It's just we weren't privy to what happened in Arcadia last episode, and now we are. Um, so getting right to it, um, we get Arcadia getting message from the grounders saying to give over Pike or this barricade around you is going to stay and you're, they're going to wait you out and starve you. Bellamy, um, kills the two grounder messengers and, um, with his gun, without hesitation, um, he, and he starts with the fact that, uh, let's see, um, the grounders say, choose the side that's best for your people, and Bellamy does, and Bellamy goes, I do that every day, and then he shoots them, and then he goes, so far nothing's happened to change my mind. So repeatedly throughout this episode, you hear... Bellamy saying that he's always done what's best for his people. Always. That's what's always running through his mind. So you got to keep that in mind through this episode. So basically that happens, which starts um, Pike setting up a new plan, which is to find the traitors within camp before they deal with anything outside of outside of Arcadia because they don't want to risk any more leaks of their plans getting to the grounders, which has been happening. So basically this episode is fine. It's kind of like a cat and mouse game and they're trying to find the traders and the traders are trying to um, pull one over on Pike's leadership. So basically it's a Pike versus Kane type thing. They both know they're each other's enemies and yet they need the proof to prove that they are each other's enemies so basically for finding the traitors pike has put bellamy and monty in charge of spying on their own people they already know kane is the lead of this rebellion so they're gonna they're trying to figure out who is in this rebellion with him so they managed to get saint Clair, and they managed to learn that monty or not monty miller and harper are along with it but um bellamy monty and brian miller's boyfriend are still siding with Pike, so they're trying to deal with all that, while Kane is trying to kidnap Pike so that he can deliver them to the grounders just like they wanted. Kind of a repeat of what happened with Finn um, in 208. But instead, Kane gets arrested for treason, and he's sentenced to death. We do see Kane orchestrating a grounder riot as a distraction to get this kidnapping on their way, but it doesn't turn out as planned. But it's definitely some elaborate planning going on both sides to figure out just how they can one-up each other and um, get the upper hand. Um, on the side note in Arcadia, we see uh, Jaha and Raven dealing with the fact that Pike confiscated um, Jaha's chip maker for the City of Lights. So Raven was tasked to retrieve it, and she recruits Jasper to do so in hopes that with Jasper's um, deep knowledge of Monty, could help her break into the security passcodes that were um, set in place by Monty on Pike's office to break in and get the chip maker. Along the way, though, Jas while Jasper's trying to figure out how this chip works, he realizes that you forget all the bad, so he holds on to the fact that it would be nice to remember the good that came with Maya. Kind of like bringing up the first time they held hands, first kisses, all those other memories. And Raven suddenly realizes that she doesn't remember any of those memories with Finn. And she slowly realizes that she, Finn is supposed to be important to her, and yet she's forgetting him. So she freaks out over that, and when they find the chip maker, she locks it up and pulls Jasper away, saying, Allie cannot have this. And we see later on that this has never happened for Allie. Whoever she speaks to, they listen and obey to her. So free will is something that Allie can't control. So um, Jaha has a plan to deal with that for Raven. So see how that happens. But moving on to the most shocking moment of the episode. I have to say, this shocked me, but I'm very glad it happened. Because it has to do with Bellamy. And it's when he covered up for Harper and Mill uh, Miller sorry, for being part of Kane's rebellion. So Monty tells Bellamy that um, 
Harper and Miller were part of the distraction, part of Kane's team, basically. And Monty's wondering, what are they going to do with them? What are they going to do with their friends? And when uh, Monty's mom comes and asks if they discovered who else was uh, in association with Kane, Bellamy lies and covers that they didn't find anybody. He's protecting Harper and Miller, and Monty goes with it. So I am so pleased that Bellamy is protecting Harper and Miller. He hasn't fully gone dark side, so... It has me thinking that maybe in that moment when he was staring Hannah down as if saying, um, kind of like pulling off the way he did it, I'm wondering, it just, I was really excited for that moment because it showed me that Bellamy is truly not lost in the Pike bullshit that he's been spouting, sorry for the language, but like it was tr that look he gave her and the way he said no and like, they didn't find anybody. The fact that you could tell he was protecting someone without giving it away, that was just fantastic. I love it. It's like, yes, Bellamy, you're on the right track again. Yes, yes, yes. So uh, moving on to the top three favorite moments. Uh, first one has to be um, Jasper and Raven working together. Together, It was great to see them working together. It's great to see um, them um pulling their knowledge together, Monty revealing certain things that he knows about Monty, like um, simple stuff like favorite book, favorite color, favorite spot, both on the Ark and on Earth, and then how they were revealing like their favorite memories of, or in Jasper's case, his favorite memories of Maya, and then how that triggered Raven to realize that she's not, she's forgetting these important things about Finn and caused, I believe, a revelation for Raven in realizing that this thing that she took that was taking away her pain is taking away a lot more than that. So I really like that, and I'm thinking that maybe snapped Raven out of it, but I hope that also keyed in for Jasper that maybe he shouldn't be taking the pill to erase the bad memories because it could erase Maya from his head. So I really like how that happened, for sure. It was great to see them working together, too as well. Um, another favorite moment for me has to be um, the riot fight with the grounders with Lincoln taking charge. He showed no mercy. He showed his skills. He, it took so many guards to restrain him and before they could taser him, but Lincoln definitely showed his power. He showed his skill. He showed his strength, and I absolutely love that. It sucks that he's stuck in that cell, but at least he got to show that he wasn't just going to he wasn't just going to stand by. He was going to fight for his right, and he was going to fight for those who couldn't. And I really like that he was on Kane's team, because even when St. Clair sent that message to Lincoln when he got thrown in the lockup, that be prepared, it's going down tonight, it was like, I wasn't expecting that either. So it's like, oh, Lincoln's part of the whole thing. It's like, when did that happen? But I really liked it, and I'm glad we got to see it, for sure. Another favorite moment is the mentioned shocking moment for me. It was the fact that Bellamy covered for Miller and Harper and that Monty backed him up. What I really like about this, though, is that for this whole episode, Bellamy has always said that he's done, everything he's done has always been for the good of his people. Now, I'm truly thinking with this moment when he covered for um, Miller and Harper, Bellamy's people it, are always going to be those delinquents, those first, those 100 kids that he was sent down to earth with first, I think Bellamy is always going to think of them as his people before anyone else in the Ark. If you just so happen to have your views aligned with Bellamy and the good of his people, then he will align with you. But if you're if you're going to harm that core group for Bellamy, those people he was meant to protect, then he's going to do everything he can to stop you or to protect them. And it really showed in that moment when he covered for Miller and Harper. Because even though they were part of the rebellion who was trying to get Pike kidnapped and taken out of the chancellor seat, Bellamy covered for them after realizing that they could be sentenced to death next after Kane was sentenced that same fate, which is what he predicted to Bellamy was going to happen with Pike. So I definitely like that this episode could be the turning point for Bellamy seeing that Pike is not the right leader for them, for sure. So moving on to the top peeved moments. First one's a minor one, is the fact that we don't see Clark and Octavia. Understandably so. Why? Because it was solely based on Arcadia, just like how last week we didn't see Bellamy or anyone from the Ark because it was focused on Polis. It was just weird because Clark and Octavia, they've always been seen at, in some capacity in every episode to this point. So it's kind of weird that we didn't see any inkling of them at all in this episode. We only got uh, mentions of Octavia not being able to check in with Kane 
Miller or a Harper and how a uh, Miller w- has been out in the field looking for signs of her and yet he hasn't even though he's the one that knows the ground the most within Arcadia. So it was just something minor. It's just a, a little weird not seeing the, the core three in every episode like we've been accustomed to so far. Okay, next peeved moment is the fact that Bellamy stood against Cain. There's the timer, but I'll, I'm still going. So, um, again, the fact that Bellamy is siding with Pike is always going to be an issue for me, especially when Bellamy stopped Kane from um, from taking Pike to the grounders. Um, but I believe that Kane being sen- sentenced to death is kind of like the first step or the first thing Bellamy needed to see happen in order for him to realize that, okay, maybe he's siding with Pike is not the right thing, but I'm also conflicted about this, okay? So, like I've mentioned before, I hate that Bellamy is siding with Pike, but I understand why Pike is raging war against the Grounders. So, on the one hand, I understand it because they're always attacking each other and everything, and it makes complete sense why Bellamy would go down this route, because it it reminds me so much of the Bellamy from Season 1, how he viewed all Grounders to be an enemy, how it was either us or them, and how he was ready to take the fight to them if need be and such like that like this really reminds me of season one bellamy so i understand if whatever is happening right now with bellamy took place immediately after season one and we didn't get season two but the fact that season two happened and all the progress bellamy made in regards to being a leader and in regards to his relationships with the grounders and everything because that happened that is why i have such a problem with what's happening with bellamy in season three because it's like he 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 had this storyline in season one, and then he had his development in season two on more understanding, growth as a leader, figure out what is the right thing to do or how it is to better approach things. He did all that progress, and then season three, it's like he took two steps back, and he, we're back to the same guy that we got back on the drop ship. And it's just like, what, we're just going to disregard all the knowledge and experience that he's gained in season two, only for him to revert back to the ways of season one? It's just... It doesn't sit right with me. And yet, if season two never happened for Bellamy, and we went from season one Bellamy to season three Bellamy, then I'd completely understand that it seemed like a more correct progression, I guess you can say, because it fits with the still mindset of the fact that the grounders are the enemy, the grounders can't be trusted, they're they're the ones trying to kill us off. But with the way that they sided with the grounders in season two it kind of throws me off. But then again, with the Grounders betraying them at the end of Season 2, it makes sense why he's so hostile against them now. So you can see why I'm kind of conflicted and how I should feel, but I definitely don't like that Bellamy is siding over with Pike over Kane, if that makes any sense. So just wrap your head around that. I do apologize, but I just had to get that out there. Last peed moment, though, was the fact that Pike is taking all this control. I mean, it still doesn't make sense to me how a guy who just got introduced into the arc uh in episode two of this season so like six episodes ago is expect is how are people okay with just him taking charge when he has no idea what has happened within the walls of the arcadia for those three months since um three months since what happened to mount weather or even the four months since they were on the ground to begin with unlike with kane who has been in arcadia who has try to get them to survive as best as he could, and he's done it for the those four months. So I don't understand how the people of Arcadia could vote for Pike, who has who's basically just a newbie walking in, and just expect him to take charge. It's like asking for, it's like, the way I see it, it's kind of like saying, like, um... Mayor of town, you always had this person running for mayor, and they're doing a pretty good job by it and everything, helping everybody survive. And then you got this new candidate, candidate coming from out of town. He's never been in town long enough, but he's had business associations with people within the town, but he hasn't been in there long enough to establish what's been going on, and yet he's running for mayor, and then he gets elected for mayor, and then he's expected to already know what the ins and outs of the city are when he hasn't been there for its duration. Like, does that make any sense? It just, it really bugs me that the people of Arcadia voted for a guy who has basically only been there for, like, four weeks. I'm just guessing on that amount, but it definitely hasn't been that long against a guy who's been with them since 
they first landed on the ground for the four months. So it just makes no sense that Farm Station seems to be having so much control within Arcadia when they are essentially still the newbies on this new campground, if that makes any sense. I just don't like Pike at all. So when he got kidnapped, I did not feel sorry for him at all. So there is that. Although you do have to understand, although I do understand why he's so hostile against the grounders, but his issues are with Ice Nation. They are not with Tree Crew. They are not with any of the other 11 clans. They are with Ice Nation. So if he has a problem with Ice Nation, he should go take it out on them, not on some unsuspecting grounder clan who was sent to help you. And also, um, some of Pike's um, aggression and stuff, it makes sense how he, with the whole views on how grounder culture, so like, when he brought up Finn and how he died, and he's like, basically, it was, they were, basically, it's the same situation again, except they chose differently this time. So with Finn, he gave himself up so that the people of Arcadia could live. So it was his, his death that they wanted, and they gave it to him. This time, it's Pike's death that they want, yet he's not giving it to them. So we get to see how two sides of the same situation play out. So I guess we'll see that, but... Yeah, Pike's always going to be a peeve of mine. You're not going to see him in the faves column unless he's taken down or taken out of the equation for good. So what will I remember most about this episode when I look back on it? Um, there are the riot fight with the grounders and the guard. Uh, the imprisoned grounders, I should say, who showed great skill even though they are uh, uh, they were um, termed sick or injured. And then you have Pr Bellamy protecting um, Harper and Miller from being prosecuted at as uh, for treason. Uh, so moving on, random questions. Um, one, very quick, where was Abby? I mean, I found her absence very odd in the sense because um, she is um, she is on Kane's side, so it just felt very odd that she wasn't present, though I kind of understand why since she deals with the medical aspect and Kane was doing, dealing with the whole political thing going on, so maybe that's why. It just felt really odd that we were in Arcadia and Kane was featured so much in this episode and yet we saw no Abby since they're usually um, tied at the hip or drawn in the hip or, or connected at the hip or whatever. Uh, next question. Could Brian, Miller's boyfriend, be looking to revolt against Pike? Because we definitely saw in this episode that Brian is questioning whether it's all right to not only lie to Miller, but side with a guy who he doesn't side with. Because we definitely see a strain in their relationship because Miller is hiding the fact that he is part of Kane's Rebellion while Pike has Brian on his side. So it's like two people on two different sides of a, a civil war going on here inside Arcadia. And it's really taking a toll on them. There's distance between them. And Brian is wondering if, is this really worth it to not only put someone, he even, it, it came to a point that Brian was even wondering if Miller had to be protected from him, uh, which isn't okay. Cause you, you really don't want to protect the person you love from your own self because then you might as well not be with them, right? So it's just, I really hope him questioning his motives to side with Pike is going to put him on Kane's side and meaning he'd go with Miller. So hopefully. Uh, next question. Are Bellamy and Monty going to turn double agents against Pike? Because it definitely seems like they silently agreed to protect Harper and Miller. So I'm wondering if they're going to go to them and kind of like um, work out some kind of plan to take down Pike while they work the inside route, or if they're just going to, if it's just Bellamy and Monty teaming up and trying to figure out how they're going to navigate this whole thing between them. But I definitely like that it looks like they may not be all the way on Team Pike. So I really like that. Next question, will we see any of the other surviving delinquents making an appearance or just to see some familiar faces that we saw back in season one would be nice. Because so far, we've only seen um, Jasper, Raven, Bellamy, Monty, Miller, and Harper. And then there was Monroe. But those were the only ones. And yet there was like 43, I believe. 42 or 43. Um, no, wait. No, it's like 40-something of the delinquents survived from Mount Weather. So we should be seeing a lot more of familiar faces around, at least. But I, hopefully we do, since Bellamy seems hell-bent on protecting them, at least. So there's that. Uh, last question. Does Jaha even realize that he's he's being made to forget about Wells, or even the family that he had back on the Ark? 
I mean, we definitely saw in 306 that even the mention of Wells from Abby, Jaha didn't even know the association, the association with the name at first. So I'm wondering if he even realizes this is happening or it's just happening. He doesn't and he has no clue because if he realized it and he was OK with this happening to him, that is just completely wrong on so many levels for sure. Okay, moving on to predictions. Uh, based off the promo for 308, uh, we're going to see that in two weeks. So March 31st is when the 100 returns. And it looks like the execution for Lincoln, Kane, and Sinclair is set. It looks like a firing squad. And it seems like Bellamy, from the impression I'm getting, is that Bellamy goes to Octavia for help to save those three that he basically helped condemn to death. Um but overall prediction, I have a very bad feeling that the moment that we see in the overall season trailer for season three, where Octavia tells Bellamy, you are dead to me after punching him repeatedly, I have a very, very, very bad feeling that it's because Lincoln dies and Octavia blames his death on Bellamy. So I have a really bad feeling for that. I hope that's not the case. I really hope they don't kill Lincoln off after what they did to Lexa last week, but it may be looking like that, so... Um, there's that. Um, also another prediction, um, Arcadia is going to find out that Lexa has died and just who this new commander is going to be. And on the new commander, I think it's going to be Antari who's going to take that role instead of Aiden, Aiden, who everyone is probably going to think is going to be the next commander since she seemed to, or he seemed to be, um, uh, a mentee or, um, a prodigy of... Uh, Alexa, since she seemed to have been his mentor, kind of like how Anya was to Alexa from the looks of it. Um, so yeah. Um, but I think Antari, which is definitely going to cause problems because if she's from Ice Nation, then she might just go on with and order the 12 clans to, um, attack Sky Crew, even though, um, Rowan is, um, the leader of, um, Ice Nation. So there's that, um. Also, last episode, we were left with the fact that Clark and Murphy are trapped in Polis um, after Titus took Lex's body to the Conclave, I believe it was. So we're going to see what happens with them, hopefully. But we're going to have to wait two weeks to see how all that happens. So what did you guys think of the episode? Did you like what happened? Uh, let me know in the comments below. I'd love to hear it. And also, before I forget, let's go to the, my top five favorite moments. reason I didn't, I actually forgot to do this is because... As you can see by the list, based off the ship orient or ship focus and the non-ship focus of my top five lists, um, this episode, while it was great in its own right for relationships, it didn't really make the top five. It actually made it to number seven, all because of the different relationships we see within the delinquents. We see Jasper and Raven working together. We see a bit of Brian and Miller's relationship. We see Bellamy and Monty uh, protecting Harper and Miller. So that's it's not as ship focused as I would have liked. So that's why it's not in top five. And then on the non ship focus, it has to be at number six overall because of the riot fights and just the whole cat and mouse um, planning, trying to one up each other as they play chess and all that and their own theoretical chess. So. That's it. So what did you guys think with your own top five? Did this episode make it? Let me know in the comments below. Love to hear that as well as thoughts, theories, and predictions that you have since we do have two weeks until we see what happens next. Um, as I said, also don't forget to like this, like this video. Like this video, sorry. Just subscribe to my channel and check out my other videos if you haven't done so already. Also, um, if you want to check out um, more stuff about the 100, check out my Tumblr page. I reblog everything that I haven't already that comes across my dashboard. I reblog promos, web clips, sneak peeks, quotes, gifs, dialogue stuff, fancy looking drawings that creative people like all of you YouTubers or YouTubers and Tumblr followers out there draw. I can't draw to save my life, unfortunately. So um, all your creativity is just awe-inspiring for me. So if you want to check all that stuff out, or even the ones that I like, it's bound to be reblogged. Link for those will be down below in my description box, whether it's the episode itself or if it's all tags related to the 100. So just for that link, scroll all the way to the very bottom and you'll see them all there. And, um, yeah. That's about it. So, um, thank you guys for watching. I truly appreciate it. Sorry for the whole tongue-tied thing that's happened throughout the episode. Uh... 
got a lot on my mind right now for sure with this episode. But um, so until two weeks from now, this is Mel wishing you all a great day, great week, wherever you are. Bye for now.